the closed circuit, folks. I'll see them right after we're finished. Should I do that? Yeah. We will definitely do. So a poll just came out. USA, as you know, the USA Suffolk, which is a highly respected poll. And we are doing great. We're up by 10 points over everybody else. And uh, it's just incredible. And I think we might even be even better than that. But who knows, right? Even if we win by one point, that's OK. That's OK. But let's win by a lot. But we're way up. Another one, morning console. We're at 36. Ben is at 12. Carly's at 10. Marco is at 9. And Ted Cruz is at 7. So that's pretty good, right? We're 36 to 12. Reuters is 31 to 14. To eight for Jeff. Oh, Jeff got it. <laughs> and Mike Huckabee, good guy, is at seven, so we're doing great there. You know the funny one, and I always say this, but it just sort of got finalized. I felt I did good in the debate, even though I was being asked too many questions, right? And the funny thing is, you know, for two hours they're asking me question after question. Somebody said 47% were either to me or about me. In other words, well, they'll ask somebody like, one of the other candidates. Donald Trump is not a good person. What do you think about it? I'm standing there like this. And then in the final 45 minutes, they couldn't ask me any questions because they asked me so many. It was embarrassing. I even apologized that I'm the one not doing it. And they said, Donald Trump decided to take off in the last part of the... And I'm saying, first of all, they made it from two hours to three hours, which is ridiculous. But they say, Donald Trump took off. They didn't ask me any questions. I said, wait a minute, I don't want to be rude, I don't want to interrupt other people, especially since I've done everything. So the poll just came out on the debate. And the drugs poll, 680,000 votes. Jerk Drudge, which is an amazing, he's an amazing guy. And it's Donald Trump, 51%, he won. Carly at 23%, who did a good job, by the way. Marco at seven and Ted Cruz at six. The Time Magazine poll. Time Magazine, I have no influence over Time Magazine, even though I was on the cover last week, right? <laughs> Time Magazine has Trump winning 55% for Trump, 20% for Carly, 7% for Marco Rubio. And I'm saying to myself, gee, I'm watching these shows, and they say Trump was okay, not great, maybe had an off night. I don't understand. I thought I did fine. And they were just trying to beat me up. But I thought we did good, and I think we're doing well, and the most important poll are like the one, the USA Suffolk, that just came out a couple of hours ago. That's fantastic. So I want to thank everybody in the room and, and the other rooms that are filled up. We'll see you in a little while. But those, those people. <laughs> New Hampshire, I tell you what, it's an amazing place. It's a great, great state. It's a great state. A friend of mine from New York said, what are people from New Hampshire like? Can you believe these questions I get? I get, I'm being honest. What are they like? I said, I'll tell you what they're like. They're an amazing, they're just amazing people. They love the country. They love to work like me. I love the country. I love to work. We're all in the same boat. And we're going to straighten it out. We're going to make America great again. That I can tell you. We're going to make it great again. I was watching one of the networks, and they said, we should have had the prisoners released, right? I mean, as part of the deal. In fact, we should have made a deal of knocking the hell out of ISIS in Syria as part of the deal. There are a hundred things that we should have gotten. We're giving them $150 billion. We got nothing except defeat, because we don't win anymore as a country. We don't win so much. We don't win anymore as a country. It's really embarrassing. So I actually tweeted this before. Do you believe this? Iran wants to trade our three prisoners. By the way, we have four prisoners. They're only talking about three. The fourth, they're not even talking about. So they want to trade our three prisoners for 19 prisoners held by the United States and many other things. I mean, how stupid are we? How stupid are we? And it's just going to change. It's going to change. 
It's just going to change. So embarrassing. Uh, Bergdorf. Bergdorf. We get Bergdorf, they get five killers that they wanted so badly. You remember Bergdorf? Right he left. He left. He deserted. And we had five and probably six people killed going after him. And the other day, I read for the first time, well, he wasn't feeling well. He may not be psychological. Who the hell cares? <laughs> and they think he might get off with nothing. Six people died. Six people. And he was a deserter. Now, in the old days, when we were strong, what did we do with deserters? That's right. There was no deserting. You deserted, you had problems. He deserts, well, it's got psychological, you know, we'll let him off, he's a nice person, right? I don't think so. So, a lot of the press has been nice to us in the last few days because we gave a very detailed tax policy where we substantially reduced taxes. China and all these other countries that have just been ripping us, ripping us, Mexico, China, Japan, we're going to be taking them back. But you know, they were so happy in a certain way, they said, well, we want policy. So I gave policy on immigration, and they were sort of happy with that. They didn't necessarily agree with everything. A lot of people don't agree, build a wall. They said, you can't build a wall. How can you build a wall? It's going to be too expensive. Our trade deficit with Mexico is $45 billion a year. Don't forget, I said Mexico. I love Mexico. I love the Mexican people. I have thousands and thousands of Mexican people that have worked with me over the years. Thousands. I have a great relationship. But their leaders, I say it all the time, are too smart for our leaders, too cunning, too sharp. And they're ripping us. So we have a deficit. Nabisco's moving. Nabisco. What's more United States than Nabisco? They're moving to Mexico from Chicago. They're gonna make Oreos in Mexico. Now think of it. And then we have Ford Motor Company. Two and a half billion dollar plant. You heard that story, I'm not gonna tell it. Because if I do, they'll kill me. You know, I have all these live television sets. You know, every other candidate can go and make a speech. Every other candidate. And they make the same speech for months. But they have 100 people. For instance, Jeb Bush is down the road. They're expecting 125 people tonight. <laughs> oh, true. Now, I'm going to tell you, because we have been getting amazing crowds. We had 20,000 people on Friday in Oklahoma. 20,000 people. <laughs> in Oklahoma, a great place. That was an amazing event. We had 20,000 people. We filled up a stadium, a, you know, where the Mavericks play. Mark Cuban, good guy, and he has the Mavericks, and it's called American Airlines Center. That's in Dallas. 20,000 people show. Some were so far up, I said, can you even see me? And we had three days to do it, because when we got it, in fact, when they said, you know, you could have that arena if you wanted, I said, when? Monday night. This was like Thursday. I said, how can we fill it up? The first day, they did 12,000 people. Then we went to Mobile, Alabama, as you know, just before that, we had 35,000 people. It's been amazing. So tonight, and I want accurate counts, because these people, they don't count heads. You know, they'll say, yeah, the place was okay. The press, they are so busy. By the way, pan out on these people, please. CNN and all the live cameras. Fire marshal said you can't have it in the office. Now it 
it's a one-story building, there's a problem, we get out of here, so I'll be the first one out the door. <laughs> people. We have closed circuit. It's amazing. It's great. And it's always like this, by the way. It's always like this. We did have one event so beautiful in South Carolina. I was called by a friend of mine who's African-American, a great guy. The South Carolina African-American Chamber of Commerce. He wrote the most beautiful letter tonight. I said I was going to read it to you. He put it in one of the papers. It was in one of the papers today. And it was the last minute thing that said, would you speak? And I liked it. I'm speaking to the African-American Chamber of Commerce of South Carolina. I went, and actually, they didn't come from the back. They just formed in the front. It was beautiful. And they, they said it was the biggest crowd, the best crowd they've ever had. It was such a beautiful day. It was a lunch. And it was wonderful. And the cameras, because they were all up front, the cameras showed chairs in the back that were empty. Like, oh, Trump's lost it. Is Trump losing? And I just walked in, did him a favor, and these people were so angry at the way they were to African American people that do such a great job, and you have to see the letter. Anybody wants it, we have it because it's, it was such a beautiful letter, and so unfair the way they were treated and the event was treated. And that's why when I go to things like this, I like to have the press see what's going on because there is a movement going on. This is more than like, oh, gee whiz, people show. When Bush has 125 people, and when Rubio comes in and you have 12 people, it's a trouble. And when all of the other ones, I don't want to say about everybody, because some of them I really like. But nobody has crowds like this. Nobody. Including Bernie, who does pretty well. Nobody. And the fact is, something Something incredible is happening. So what's gone on is we put in policy on immigration, and that's build a wall. People have to come into the country legally, have to do it. Terrible. The other week, as you saw, like a lot of press, 
a woman, 66-year-old veteran, raped, sodomized, and killed by an illegal immigrant. Just came in and killed her. 66-year-old veteran killed her. And that's happening all over. We're going to stop it. We're going to stop it. We're going to have a war. And I'm really good at walls, believe me. What I do great, I build. What I do better than it. That's why with the infrastructure of the country, it's falling apart. We're spending money all over the world. We don't even know where we're spending money. I was going to bring up today to have a list of some of the dumb things that the country does. One of them was a washer. You know what a washer is? That's where the screw, you pop the wash, you get a little extra grip. So it was a two-cent washer. And by the time it went from, I think it was South Carolina to Texas, is a circuitous route, it costs $988,000 to have it delivered over a long period of time. There's so many things like that. There are so many things. There are item after item hammers that you buy for seven, eight dollars, selling for thousands, that we buy as a country for thousands of dollars. Some people are getting really rich. Who are these people that are making these deals? You're probably saying, maybe I do too. We want a part of these companies, right? I want a piece of them. But when they're selling things that sell at a store for pennies, they're selling them for thousands of dollars. There's so much fat. So much fat. And I get a lot of credit for coming out with immigration. Some people don't agree. They think it's harsh. Some people think it's great. You know, Dwight Eisenhower was a wonderful general and a respected president. And he moved a million people out of the country. Nobody said anything about it. When Trump does it, it's like, oh. When Eisenhower does it, it's fine. Well, that was actually what's not to do. You know, we can't do it. That was also in the 50s. Remember that? A different time. That's when we had a country. That's when we had a country. We don't have a country where you're without borders, you just don't have it. But Dwight Eisenhower, there's big reports, and they used to take them out and put them on the other side of the border. Say, you have to stay. And they'd come right back. And they'd do it again, and do it again, and then they said, wait a minute, this doesn't work. And they took them out and moved them all the way south. All the way. And they never came back again. This was too far. Amazing. And I'm not saying this in a joking way. I'm saying this is what happened. It wasn't working. They were coming right back. And then they literally, literally moved them all the way. And I have to tell you, a lot of the politicians, they never came back because it's too far. They put them on boats and all the way down south. And that was it. But then a lot of things happened. And a lot of changes took place. And now we've become so politically correct as a country that we can't even walk we can't think properly. We can't do anything. Every time you say something, oh, that was not politically correct. That wasn't politically correct. Nobody respects women more than I do, I will tell you. And I used to, that's true. And I will do more. It's true. My mother was the greatest person there was. But nobody respects women more than I do. And two weeks ago, I was making a speech, and I said, I respect women. I cherish women. I do. I cherish women. And Hillary said, we don't want to be cherished. We want to be respected. I said, I said that. <laughs> I think you want to be cherished, too. Yeah, it's better than respect. It's everything. You want to be respected. You want to be loved. You want to be cherished. You want to be everything. I think, am I right, women or wrong? <laughs> cares more than I do. And I will tell you, that women's health issues, where Jeb Bush recently said that he's not going to fund them. Then he said he misspoke. The word is misspoke. He misspoke. You can't misspeak. I mean, that's going to be so vital and so important. And we're going to take care of our women. But we're going to take care of our vets. We're going to take care of them. We're going to really take care of people. Because I know how to do it. We're going to bring jobs back into the country. We're going to become a rich country. We're a poor country. We're a poor country. We're a dead nation. We owe now $19 trillion for a few months, I've been saying 18, now it's up to 19. We owe China $1.5 trillion. Think of it. They take our jobs, they take our base, 
They take our money, and we owe them $1.5 trillion. How does that work? That's like a magic hat. We owe Japan the exact same amount, $1.5 trillion. We owe them. They send millions of cars here. We pay for the cars, they have no tax, no nothing. By the way, try doing business in Japan. I always say, how many Chevrolets do you think you're gonna find in the middle of Tokyo? Maybe none? You think none? There might be none. We sell them beef, and they don't want it. Beef. And they don't want it, they send it back. The farmers don't want it. So we owe Japan $1.5 trillion. Think of it. They sell us all these cars, we owe them money on top of everything else. It's gonna stop. It's gonna stop so easy. It's so easy. We have to balance out. I went to my people this week and I said, I want to know something. I want to know how much do we, in terms of balance of trade, how much are we behind the eight ball, the U.S. trade deficit with China, Japan, and Mexico? Well, China, it's almost $400 billion a year. $400 billion! Japan is almost $70 billion a year. And Mexico, 45. 45 billion. Then they say, oh, you can't get Mexico to pay for the wall. It's $5 billion. Believe me, I'll build bigger, better, stronger for half the price. Much less than half. Watch yourself, oh, it's gonna be so beautiful, it's gonna work so well. It's gonna work so well. You see the picture of the big magazine this weekend? I knew the magazine because I was on the cover, that's the only reason I read it. But they have a wall like probably eight or nine feet. And they have a ramp going up and another ramp going down. They have cars and trucks going over, taking drugs. So here's the deal. We get the drugs, they get the money. These trucks go right over the ramp, over the wall. Can't do that when the wall is higher than the ceiling. Or it's a long way down if they miss that ramp, I'll tell you. It's a long way down. And I don't blame it. People can get away with this stuff. Let them get away with it. But we need to make our country so strong and so beautiful. We're going to do it. So then I put in something on policy with regard to the Second Amendment. I'm a big Second Amendment person. something that I've really gotten to know a lot about. We're going to take care of our vets. I'm going to put in a policy paper on the veterans and the Veterans Administration, and I know what to do. These guys, it's not even the money. We spend so much money, but we have all thieves, tremendous corruption. A few weeks ago on Wednesday, we had the longest wait in the history of the Veterans Administration. You're in a waiting room. They waited days to see a doctor. They're dying. You saw that, you saw the reports. It's hard to believe so many people are dying while they're waiting, they're dying. Things that can be taken care of with a pill, with a, a couple of visits, with maybe one visit, and they're dying. It's not gonna happen anymore. No, it's not gonna happen.
and I speak through the applause, and I think I'll keep doing it because it's exciting to me. So I'm excited. So I appreciated the article. The guy's right, actually. So what I did is we came up with a really great text plan that has been really praised, and in some cases not. They said it's too big. It's too big. We've got to put our country back. To we have the highest taxes in the entire world, highest in the world. Our corporations are leaving our country because the taxes are too high. And I did a very sophisticated, very beautifully detailed policy. Now, a lot of the press would say, prior to that especially, and the Second Amendment, and frankly, immigration, they would say, oh, he talks well, but he doesn't talk about it. And I went to great schools. I'm like a smart person. It's like, oh, he doesn't talk details. So all of a sudden, I'm speaking details. And even if they don't like the details, they appreciate it that I gave you the details. So I will tell you, that the tax plan is, I think, really something we're proud of. And I'm going to go over it just quickly, because most of you have heard it. But it's going to help you. It's going to help in a lot of ways. Number one, it's going to help with jobs. It's going to help with jobs. It's going to put people at work. We're taking jobs back. We're going to have companies. We are going to have companies now come back into our country. We're going to have a lower tax rate than China. We're going to have a lower tax rate than many of these countries. You know what corporate inversion is? Corporate inversion is a disaster. Companies have billions, trillions, at least two and a half trillion total outside of the country. Everybody agrees the money should be allowed to come back in. Republicans, Democrats, this has been going on for years, they still can't agree. They agree, but they can't come to a conclusion. And if we bring that two and a half trillion, and I'll tell you, it's a bigger number than that. And if it is, my plan's even better. But I'm letting it come in for a very reasonable price, meaning a very reasonable tax. Right now, the tax is so high, you can't think of anybody who's running one of those companies. They can't get it in. They work on paperwork. And they, they can't get it in. Smart and the greatest of You can't get the money. So I'm going to simplify it. I want the money to come in so that these companies, number one, don't go. You know what they do? A lot of them leave, you know this, in order to get the money. They actually move their company to Ireland, to other places in Europe, to other places in the world in order to get the money. And you have some big, incredible companies, big name companies, that are now thinking of leaving the United States to get the money and to get lower taxes. And there's really no way you can stop that. You can't say it's illegal, because they'll find a way around it. The only thing that stops it is the marketplace. The marketplace is going to stop it. So we're going to take care of that. But we have, and I, I sort of titled it, tax reform that will make America great again. Today they said it's very Reagan-esque. I consider that a great compliment. One of the writers, one of the writers. And, thank you. And I start off, too few Americans are working. Too many jobs are being shipped overseas. And too many middle-income families just cannot make ends meet. We all know it. And if it's not you, you know people where that's the case. My plan directly meets these challenges and the challenges also of business. We're going to make our businesses strong again. We're going to make them competitive again. And by the way, nothing to do with this, but we're going to get rid of the regulations that are mounting up like on a daily basis. It's ridiculous. Regulations are going to go to us. There will be some, but they'll be meaningful. There won't be the nonsense that every single day is happening every single day. The plan will provide major tax relief for middle income and most other Americans. Major tax relief. It'll totally simplify the tax relief. We'll grow the American economy, and all of this will add up to a point where we're not going to be increasing our debt. If anything, if it really kicks in like I think it might, where the economy grows, we'll start reducing our debt and reducing it bigger, which I want to do. And again, it's, it's, I know the people I'm running against, and I know Democrats and Republicans. They can't do this, folks. I'm really good at it. Who's better at debt than I am? Who's better? Somebody with whatever the hell that is, whatever that craziness is 
something. You need, you need that. You need that. You can't just be a politician, all talk, no action, they talk. They wouldn't know what to do with China. Carl Icahn, great entrepreneur, everybody knows Carl Icahn. He came out yesterday, he said, Trump is the only one that knows what he's talking about. And he's great. And I'll get him involved. I'll say, Carl, you've handled China. And you know what I'll do? Just walk away. Don't worry. We'll do very well. We'll do very well. We're going to come out great. We're not going to have a $400 billion deficit. That'll go away very rapidly. And we'll get along. China doesn't even like us. You know, these countries, they rip us off. They don't even like us. With me, I'll stop the rip off and they'll like us. Can you believe it? From, and this is very important. Number one, we're cutting down from seven brackets to four, and the rates are going from 25 to 20 to 10 and to zero. When somebody's not making enough to live, what's the purpose of them doing lengthy returns, going to get help from H&R Block, who we intend to put out of business? Because that's the <laughs> I mean, these people need help in not doing well. So what's the purpose? Plus the bookkeeping, it'll be a tremendous percentage. But in many, and some are not paying now anyway. But they have to go through this process, it's brutal. So we're gonna simplify, but think of it. 25%, 20%, and 10%. And it's, that's a major reduction. Now some people say it's too big a reduction. Some of the great geniuses that haven't made a dollar in their life. They're not a dollar, they haven't created one job. Well, I think it's too much. The only dollars they get is from their mouth. Then, if you're single and earn less than 25,000, or married and jointly earn less than 50,000, you will not pay any income tax, okay? is the alternative minimum tax. We eliminate it. We end the death tax. It's a double taxation. It's a double taxation. And a lot of you, as an example, in New Hampshire, you have a store, you have a little building, you have a something. You leave it to your kids. The kids get a tax bill, but they have to pay 35 and even 50% in estate taxes. Now they mortgage up the business. The bank ends up taking it off because they have to pay the estate taxes. And you've been paying taxes all the while. It's double taxation and it has to end. So many businesses have been destroyed by the death tax or the estate tax, as people like to call it. and loopholes available to special interests, who, by the way, are supporting Bush and Rubio, and most of them, and Hillary, big league Hillary, big league Bush. You know, Bush is going to spend $100 million on ads. That money comes from friends of mine. They're friends. I know most, some are enemies, some of them I don't like. Well, actually, many of them I don't like. But, You see an ad, every time you see an ad from Rubio or Bush or Hillary, remember that money's coming from special interests and lobbyists. And when they want something done in a year from now, two years from now, if they ever get in, you say, won't that be sad? If Trump doesn't make it, won't that be a terrible thing? <laughs> but when that money gets spent on, you know, millions, 25 million, uh, Jeb today put in an order, I hear 25 million for ads. Well, what do you do when you're weak on immigration and you're in favor of Common Core? How do you solve that problem with AIDS? I don't think you solve it. Rubio, the same thing. He's very, very, very weak on immigration. A member of the Gang of Eight, totally weak on immigration. How do you solve the problem when you say people can just pour in? Made a speech not so long ago in Spanish, saying he wants to open up the borders, essentially. He didn't 
didn't want you people here, so he made the speech in Spanish. That's <laughs> true. But he's very weak on illegal immigration. And I don't think, I'm not sure, I may be wrong, but whether you're Ruby or Bush, I have to tell you one, so do you mind? So Bush is the mentor of Ruby. And everybody said, this is politics at its lowest and worst. I can't stand these politicians, right? So Bush is the mentor. And he goes out, and he says, yes, and he pushed, and everybody said Rubio will never run because it would be disrespectful to his mentor. And I understand that. That's a little loyalty, right? I mean, that's sort of nice. Hello, folks. How are you? That's sort of nice, right? You know, you're loyal. I believe in that. So everyone said Rubio will never run. The great genius pundits are on Fox and CNN and MS. They're all there. Oh, no, he'll never run. He runs. Heard this way, it was this way, very young. He runs. And they ask Bush, what do you think of Rubio? Rubio comes out and he's talking about Bush. What do you think of Rubio? He's my dear friend. He's so wonderful. I love him so much. <laughs> then they ask Rubio, who's running against Bush? And he's, you know, probably shouldn't be from a loyalty standpoint. The veterans know what I mean about loyalty, right? Right? Wonderful, just they hate each other. <laughs> Trust me, I know. They hate so much. They hate more than anybody in this room hates their neighbor. <laughs> but it's political bullshit. Do you understand? Significantly discounted. 
discount at a rate of 10 percent. In other words, they're bringing it up, we're going to tax them 10 percent, they're going to have the money in our country instead of having it overseas. <laughs> tax rate of 10 percent and ends to the deferral of taxes on corporate income earned abroad. So that what you're going to do is you're going to have tremendous incentives for people even if they're doing business abroad. But you're going to bring the money back into the United States. And they're going to put the money back to work, even if they just give it out in dividends. Because the people getting the dividends are going to spend the money. And you're talking about trillions of dollars are over there. Trillions of dollars. And believe me, mark my words, I told you before, they say it's 2.5 trillion. I say it's much more than that. Nobody even knows. So corporate inversion, we're going to stop, and we're going to have companies not leave. In the old days, people would leave New York, and they go to Florida. Or they'd leave New Jersey, they go to Texas, where the taxes are low. Now, they leave the United States, and they go to Ireland, and they go to other countries, where they have lower tax rates, and other things. But with what I'm doing, they're not going to be leaving anymore. And we don't have to say, boom, you're staying. They're not going to leave anymore. So it really works. What we want to do now is reduce or eliminate many of the business loopholes because we're lowering the taxes so much that we can get rid of these tremendously complicated loopholes. And in the end, the business taxes are going to be lower than they were before substantially, but you're not going to have accountants where you have tax returns that go up to the ceiling if you have a business. It's going to be simple. It's going to be less taxes, and it's going to be simple. So we're going to be in a position to do some amazing things. And I've gotten just so many people are so thrilled with what I said about taxes. And I thought I'd review it for you. I, I did this the other day at Trump Tower. And we had a great turnout. And as I said, we had just amazing response. So let's talk a little bit about ISIS. And let's talk about our country. We spent, thank you, we spent so much money, so much money, in the Middle East, just spent trillions, just in Iraq, two trillion dollars, just in Iraq. Not to mention, even more importantly, the lives and the wounded warriors who I love, who I love. These are the greatest of all. We don't take care of our problem, but these are the greatest of them all, the wounded warriors.
We have roadways that are coming apart. We have airports in the third world. I mean, you go over to Qatar, you go over to Saudi Arabia, you go over to some of these countries, China, you see airports the likes of which you have never, ever seen before.